Uh, just to begin with, you know, uh, because I'm going to talk about the homeless people, people who sleep on footpaths and, um, you know, uh, we call them city makers. So, uh, just I think to begin with, uh, when you call any person homeless, what do you understand by that? Yes, for sure, we know that they are, you know, um, they, are, uh, they are in city for work. They come to city, you know, uh, because of dire needs, conditions, which is like, which pushes them to cities as such. But then, each one who is there on the street will have a reason. A friend from Ajika Bureau will also works with migrants and all. He'll be also able to say, like, you know, so, and especially for women in India, uh, you know, women in the West are different, but women in India, if you're a homeless, if you become a homeless, by social issues, domestic problems, personal issues, or whatever, you, you, get a, you become a widow, you have a husband who batters you, or whatever, then you're homeless for life. So that is the situation actually, okay. And uh, so I think, you know, so what I'll do is now is I'll just start presentations, the presentation as such, and I would, uh, you know, surely request you to, because I, um, you know, uh, must say that uh, there'll be many, many, you know, uh, things I'll be saying which might be, you know, uh, pretty shocking at times. Uh, because, uh, you know, we have learned to take sides. Your researchers, I was also, in fact, I was also done my uh, master's in infinite everything in sociology and philosophy. So, uh, we are taught to, you know, be objective. And even I remember as a student of sociology, I used to always talk, you know, I used to have a debate with T.K. Oman and Yuginder Singh and all. That, sir, I'm sorry, you know, but how can we not take sides? So that's why I, I uh, you know, took to more towards phenomenology, you know, than uh, the normal research methods and all that, you know. So I think maybe we'll talk on that later. So uh, if you see, uh, I think uh, this word we are using, city makers, because I'll tell you as to why you're using the word city makers. I think, uh, remember the title that is there, like, are they still intruders? They're homeless residents, they're city makers. Um, in fact, I must tell you that, you know, this was a publication called Delhi, A Tale of Two Cities, which when I was in Voluntary Health Station of India, Vihai, which is uh, very close to JNU in the, you know, um, Kutub institution area. So this study we did in 93 because there was a, uh, elections happening after 50s, first time in Delhi, you know. Uh, and uh, elections were going to be December, so we said let's do a study of Delhi, uh, comparing it with, uh, you know, uh, Mumbai, Chennai, Chennai uh, and Kolkata, the, at that time the major metropolitan cities as such. And um, in this study, we compared and we found that Delhi, how Delhi was worst on all parameters. Be it education, be it roads, be it uh, health, you know, um, municipal functions, whatever, okay. And, uh, you know, we had compared Delhi, you know, NDMC area, which is about just 5% of Delhi, as the garden city and about 95% which is MCD areas as the garbage city. And it's true till date by the way, okay? It's not changed. But one thing, and by the way, I was the coordinator of the study, Delhi Taylor 2 series. I was, I was also one of the contributors to the study. But in this study, while we did, we went to slums, we got pictures and everything. But I'm just, I just want to say here that many of you are researchers, some of you also in the field of action. But until unless we put a lens, you know, of looking at things, we don't look actually. The one segment which was missing was what came out in the next publication. So this Delhi Taylor Suit is two cities had not a word on the homeless people. And I'm one of the researchers of that, okay? So I'm not saying that, okay, somebody is in the study and we didn't have homeless people at all and we start, you know, we start saying, oh, we are, you know, like some great people who've done research. So I think I'm just counterposing two studies. Is actually how you focus. So it, it was around um, uh, 1999, you know, when, um, uh, you know, of course I'll come to that, uh, when uh, Action had called a meeting uh, in Planning Commission. At that time, uh, you know, Dr. N.C. Saxena was the uh, secretary of that. So Harsh Mandar had taken over as the, you know, director of, uh, country director of Action Aid. They called a meeting. And in that meeting, what, what was discussed was like, you know, um, how about um, working on urban poverty? Because on rural poverty, there has been a couple of, you know, work happening, many schemes that have come up. And uh, so uh, I think, you know, why not uh, let's you know, do something with uh, 
with the people who nobody has worked with and especially the homeless people who are on the fringes of, you know, and then idea was that to, to work with Gandhi's last person, you know, that famous talisman that Gandhi talks about, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, so, and the idea also was that, you know, one, let's start the work in Delhi, Delhi being the capital of the country. And as the work goes on, as the work, you know, uh, moves on, we will take the work if we learn lessons to other cities of India. Okay, so with that uh, thing, we started the work. So in 2000, uh, we did study, you know, in fact, the study that we saw publication that capital is homeless, uh, study we did in 2000, the publication came out 2001 as such, you know. So I think the publication is a year later because it takes time to publish and all. Um, you know, uh, this is just, um, there will be lots of, you know, jumps here and there, so I just will put it together. Now, we took some art students, you know, uh, uh, the College of Art and Jamia Millia Islamia art students, um, when we do certain walks and all in Delhi, uh, from say uh, Jama Masjid to Chandni Chowk, those are familiar, you know, it's an old city actually. And um, so we went um, meeting the homeless and all, and uh, at the shelters and all. And so at that, it was a five day workshop that they had on various themes. So homeless is one theme as such, you know. And when they came back, so there were many paintings made. This was one painting which was made by one of the participants of the walk. If you see, in the painting also, it's shown people with limbs. There is, you're not in one piece. If you're homeless, you're not even one piece, you know. And at the, the green tree that is there is like a, some hope. The, the hope, you know, that's something because we were doing the work, so shelters are coming up, but that's still, you know, st still pretty remote. I'm talking, this painting came up about 2010. Okay. Um, yes, you know, uh, so when we started the work, in 2000, we had uh, the census describing them as houseless, okay? And we somehow found the word pretty offensive. That what is, what do you mean by houseless, you know? It, it's neither emotive nor connotes anything. And um, so we were grappling with the word. So I think we surely made it homeless, saying that, okay, you have got something less in life, which is home. And home also signifies security, love, care, everything, right? So when you're homeless, which means that all those things which signify home is not there in your life, period. Okay. Houseless is what you live in a physical structure. You make it into a home, even this physical structure. So I think so that's what I think the distinction was. So, so we toyed with this, you know, homeless people, homeless friends. And so we had a friend, Jerry Pinto, who was, he's no more, who was, who's worked, who was that time working with UNICEF. And he said, yeah, you know, I think let's call them homeless citizens, okay? And then we had Milun Kothari with us, the former UN special reporter on educated housing, who said Hindu nowadays, no, in fact, at the UN level, we call uh, as the word is residents, not citizens. Because if you are a resident in a country, in a place, you have every right to the city as such, okay? So that's when we call, start calling them homeless uh, you know, residents and all. And but somehow still, I think the word was not adequate. And so ultimately trying to grapple with our right um, labeling is also important, you know, which is positive connotation as such. So we came up with this world called city makers. And as I asked some of you, you said like, you know, uh, yes, city is made by some of those architects and uh, all the rich and big wigs and all that. But for us here, we, when we talk of city makers, we are talking of the people who are homeless, who are beggars, so-called beggars, who are on the streets, but they have lived on the streets for so many years and they all came to the city for work. Nobody came to the city for housing. That should be very clear. And the economic text that we all have learned about the push and pull factor, you know, that, well, uh, people uh, get attracted to cities, you know, they come in drones, like drones, you know, and because of the glamour and, you know, uh, the glitter of the city, they come. In fact, there's not one person that we have, uh, um, you know, spoken to in the last 20 years, close to 20 years, who has come to city for, you know, becoming a hero. Like, they, as they talk about going to Bollywood, you know, going to Bombay, they go for becoming a hero and all that. And nobody has ever come, whether man, woman, child, whatever, has ever come for a house. So they all have come for work. So that should be clear, you know. So, uh, so this word, city makers came about after 10 years of a work with the 
homeless people. So it's like, not that we got the word immediately. So it's, you can see that like the word was also like, you know, everything uh, is uh, grounded. And uh, Robert Chambers, from whom we have learned PR and all, when uh, he was there in India in 2010-11, we had a function for him. And, uh, you know, I told him that Robert, we don't call homeless as homeless, we call them city makers. He was happy. He said, Hindu, this is what is called positive labeling. And then he gifted me a book called, you know, on, uh, on labeling, in fact. So, so that's, I think, maybe any questions will come to that. So just, I think you must have seen these sites, you know. It's like who these people are, like, uh, and then of course, um, I think when you got this word, uh, there was somebody, you know, who said, uh, you know, I, I'll say a few things in Hindi and then also say in English because there are friends who may not understand um, Hindi at all. Uh, you know that uh, they said, Ki city makers, uh, you don't think you're saying too much, that you're saying too much for those people. So then the answer was that if we ask for the sky, we'll get clouds. So why should we ask for clouds? We'll ask for the entire canvas of city makers, straight. The city makers, you know. Uh, but what about others? What about we people, you know, who work? I said, well, we are city marauders. You know, we have got the benefit of living in the city. Anyhow, you might be a city maker, but you have been recognized for that. But they are the city makers who have not been recognized to be a city maker. And in Hindi, it's Shahar uh, Nirmata ya Nagar Nirmata. So I think when we took this word and started talking to the homeless that, you know, this is the word that we think is very important. You, can, you must have, like, if you take this word to them, they say, yes, that's right, you know. And then they also have a sense of pride, ki, yes, we made the city and we deserve something from the city. So the right to city, in a way, in that, for us, uh, because about 2004 or five, we got to know about the Right to City campaign happening in Latin America and all. So we were, you know, we were, in fact, we had been to Porto Alegre for the World Social Forum and uh, the entire Right to City campaign was happening there. So I think we also spoke about our work with the homeless and all. So I think we have been part of various national and international, uh, you know, work that's gone on with the homeless people as such. So if you see, like, it's not that they're carrying loads, they're also carrying people on the loads. Huh? So you can imagine like what happens, you know, of course, and it's tough work that they do. It is not something, you know, that they will say, you know, and then normally we will say that, oh, they're lazy people. Huh? You might find them lazing around the evening. Okay, they're not lazing around, it's actually resting after the back-breaking, you know, work as such. Um, well, I think, you know, this was something, so it was a work map, you know, that I tried to draw. I think uh, I don't want to. You know, I think it's just a. It'll take itself one hour. You know, as how the work started. So I think it's a kind of a river of life. You know, how the work started and all that. Um, just to quickly tell you here that uh, you know. Uh, so in a way, this work with the homeless that we have done, the credit for this work surely goes to Action Aid. You know, because uh, before that there was nothing happening. I showed you the study that we did in Vihai, right? The word homeless is totally missing from there. So until we started the work in 1999, the work was not happening at all. And I must tell you, like coming from JNU, we, you know, we scanned the literature around homeless in the libraries, you know, Tin Murti and our own library in JNU and other places. Not a single, I've, I've also done my MPhil and everything, you know, not a single there's thesis on that. So for some of us, you know, um, even in terms of research students that we are, you know, uh, it was a challenge as to how do we uh, go ahead doing the research. So. Um, and, uh, you know, so there were many of the researchers who joined us, you know, and uh, uh, so f the first thing that we did was, you know, like, uh, we tried to, of course, uh, read into material, you know, that when, we, when we do the secondary research, look for materials that are not there. Then we said, okay, uh, let's go to Mumbai. We might get some answers in terms of how do we do the work with the homeless people. We went to Mumbai, we met uh, groups like Yuva and, you know, Jokin uh, from NSDF and, you know, uh, National Assembly Federation, all these groups and all. But then finally we realized that you have payment dwelling in Mumbai. Okay, but per se homelessness, but still not much work happening on that front, you know. So we came back and then we realized that we had to do our own data collection. And for us, I think what we did was, you know, um, uh, we did our surveys. We had a questionnaire for format for sure. We did our surveys from 7 o'clock in the evening until midnight, 12 o'clock. And we did a head count of the homeless people sleeping on the footpaths from midnight till early morning, 5.30. So it was something which, because when talking to the homeless people, you would find them only in the night. Okay, so for us, much of our work and everything 
had to happen in the night. And so many times people were also joined us, you know, uh, they felt, oh my God, it'll be evening and night, you know. So we said, yeah, it has to be like that. You know, we can't be doing nine to five work because the homelessness is there on the streets in the night. So, so we got lots of volunteers and all, I think, you know, uh, uh, from different organizations and we did this study. And um, just to ask you, you know, I think, uh, check with you, what do you think they must have told about the major problem that they faced? They faced lots of problems. So what do you think would be the foremost problem they would have faced? The homeless in Delhi. And that, by the way, is the foremost problem they face across the country and across the world also. Okay? That we realized. What is the foremost problem that they faced? So the foremost problem that they faced was of the police. Right? And I must tell you, you know, there's, in fact, it's there in this also, like, uh, we asked one eight-year-old child. Yeah, you know, um, in terms of like, I think each one of you must have been subjected to the same kind of, you know, questioning when you're growing up, uh, you know, by your relatives and everybody, you know, when they come to your home, they are normally ask you, you know, kya banna ho? what do you want to be, you know, even today I was giving a walk to my, you know, pet, and there was this girl saying, uh, you know, main bade ho ke ye banungi. her was saying to her dad, you know, as she's walking, so I think this is something that you all grow up with. So this, this question was posed to this child. What does he want to grow up to be? Any guesses what he must have told? Police. police. Okay, yes. yes. Yes, yes. Many homeless children want to be police. Yes. But not this child. Let us think now further. And I can, I can bet on this. I can bet on this. There is no answer in this room. There is no answer with any bureaucrat. In this country, and there is no answer with the prime ministers also because they haven't been on the street. And the answer will shock you, and that should remain with you forever. I can tell you that much. So check out the answer. What did this child of eight years, eight years, not nine, ten, seventeen, eighteen? Sorry. Kya banna chata tha bacha? He uses he used to use one word, and the word is going to shock you. I can tell you that much. And that that the fact that the child knew that word. Is the most shocking thing. He wanted to be a Hitler. Hitler. And the same silence that you have here came for me also when I heard the word Hitler from this 80 year old child. And when I asked, Bache, but Tell me, but uh, after two minutes of my total silence, because I was also Fox, you know, Hitler, I said, oh, now, what the hell, you know. So, um, when I asked the child, ki, Beta, Hitler, kyun? Because, just hugged him a bit, you know, because there must be anguish in him for saying that word. And that all of eight years child, his face turned red with rage and anger. Art salka bacha. Imagine eight years old child can be angry. This is India, na? Chacha Nehru, Chodha Nambar, uh, uh, Child Rights Convention, uh, DC, you know, NCPCR, and so many things are there, right? Uh, uh, education policies and policies for children and women, Dwakra, and so many schemes in the country. And this child wanted to be Hitler. Why? In rage, I'll say in Hindi first, then in English, he said, Bhaiya, Hitler ban ke na mein? Sare Police ko marunga mein. Sare police walo ko marunga. Jis tarike se mujhe belt or booton se pitai kari thi police walo ne, mein unko marunga. That by becoming Hitler, I'll kill all the police people. Because the way I was belt, beaten by them, by the belt and the boots of these guys, I'll kill all of them. <gasps> now all of eight years child, imagine, he's nursing, not a dream but a nightmare. To nurse a nightmare, imagine how suffocating, how dangerous it is. Huh? And we talk about ourselves being a democracy. So, this is one child I'm talking to you about. So, there might, be, there might be so many other children also in the streets. And we see streets, children all across the country, all across the world. Now, maybe it's dramatic that we met this child. You know, not every other child might want to say that. But the fact is that this is something I didn't hear from somebody else. I heard it myself. This child told me. So, I know that it's the truth, you know. So, so if, if capital of India, a child nurses a nightmare to be a Hitler, because the police has been like that, you know for sure 
Now, this is one problem which uh, dawns when you're a homeless. If you're a homeless, because we realize, because, you know, I must share with you that, you know, we started our, with our, you know, um, street medicine uh, at Jama Masjid every Mondays and, uh, you know, uh, Fridays, every Mondays and Thursdays. And then we started what we call a program, at that time we used to call it Night Out. But it's not a good night out, that you go for a picnic and all that. So we call it Night Vigil, you know. So from about 5th of December 2000, we started a night vigil every Tuesdays and Fridays, okay? And I've personally done about 300 night vigils by now. And my team has done about 3,000 night vigils and all, you know. In fact, some of you must have also been in Patna and all, you must have done that, you know, with Tariq and all. So, in night, I can tell you, in the night vigils, which goes from about 9 o'clock in the night until early morning, we came across huge problems that the homeless would face. We saw the police guys beating them up. We came across dead bodies of the homeless people. We came across people who are sick. We came across accident cases, you know, who are lying on the streets. I think taking them to hospitals, getting them admitted. We came across lots of cases of mental illnesses of men and women and all that. So I think, so like when it's like, you know, it's, it's like you do the research, we did the research, research findings came out. We took the findings to a larger set of organizations in Delhi. We told them that, listen, we are very handful people, five, six people. We can't reach over. And I must tell you that the, the headcount gave us figure of 52,765 people on streets of Delhi. 52,765 people. And we said for every uh, one person that we counted, there were many who we missed because we couldn't go to all the lanes and bylanes and all. And there were also people who were working in the night. When you go to old city area of Delhi, there are people working, say, between 11 to 3, because much of the loading and unloading happens at that particular point. So they're not sleeping, so we can't count them as homeless. So we said for everyone counted, we missed one for sure. So that takes us to figure of about 100,000 people in Delhi, okay? And, um, you know, that brings me to my other point. Um, Have you all used census data? You use census data, right? For everything as you use sex, sex ratio, uh, women's participation rate and all that, right? Huh? And, and uh, what would you say about the census as such? It's such a great department, right? Getting the data and all that. Right? Right, wrong? Right? Now, there's another shocker. The biggest fraud and farce is census department. We, we were part of census 2001. We were part of census 2011 for the homeless people in one 2001, we did census with them in Delhi. 2011, we did census with them in different cities of India, in Mumbai, Patna, Kolkata, Hyderabad, and other places. And we saw so how hundreds and thousands of homeless have, were not even counted by uh, census people. So that's the reason why in the 2000 study of ours says 52,765 people, and census 2001 says uh, some 24,000, some, some, some you know, 499 kind of, you know. And then census 2011 says uh, that there are about some 44,000. And our own study of 2008, which we did later, counted some about uh, 88,410 persons you know, on streets of Delhi. And again, we say one counted, one missed, means about a lakh, 150,000 people on the streets of Delhi. So, if your bodies, like these are government bodies who are empowered to do studies, and by the way, all our planning and fund allocation and everything is based on census data or not, right? Isn't it? All the allocations, our master plans and everything is based on census data. And if the census data is compromised, it's not capturing the fact what results we'll be having. And that's the reason why, you know, what happens is we make the government, first of all, if the reality is this much, right? The capture, this much. Allocation comes to this much. And spent is this much. So you can imagine. And the problem, so what, which means is, the problem remains where it is. So that's the reason why, despite all implementations and schemes and everything, we are badly flawed. So we should understand this, you know, this simple fact that, and again, I want to tell you here that until we did the work on homeless persons, you know, um, as I mentioned, there were, there were no studies, except there was one study done by Veronique Dupont uh, about 1999 which was again more about the work, you know, what work they're doing and all that, but numbers and all she didn't do, you know, as such. And then from Delhi, after our work we did, we took the work to Chennai in 2002, 
2003, uh, we were in Lucknow. Uh, 2004, we were in Hyderabad, um, Patna, Guwahati, Kolkata, like that. You know, Chennai and all. We, in fact, Chennai was 2002. So we, and Bangalore also. So we finally took the work to different cities and all. And we had similar studies, similar surveys and all, in similar surveys, you know, in different cities. So we got uh, roughly the numbers and all. And 2001, we had filed a PIL in uh, Delhi High Court, by which we got uh, two shelters to run on a model basis in Delhi. Uh, then in 2003, we filed a PIL in Supreme Court of India. And, uh, you know, it took 10 years for it to be of fruits. So 2013 it got activated. So the problem is also like, you know, with a justice system. Uh, I, I think maybe when I come to that, uh, share with you. Uh, so which, so like today was the Supreme Court hearing. It's on the basis of the petition that we filed in 2003 as such. Because of which you know, shelters are opening up across the country as such. You know? So I think, and uh, I'll come to that. Yeah. So in a way, I think when talking of homeless persons, who are the homeless people, you know? It's like it includes whole range of people, you know, it's like women, children, disabled, elderly, all that is there. And when we started the work, we were also you know, debating this, like, you know, we're calling them homeless. What if they have a home in the village? Because that's what people tell you, you know, what if they have a home in the village? So our thing was that, will, they, will we call them homeless? Because, you know, I think we also need to be, you know, I think uh, clear as to what the issue really is. So we said, that if the home is there in the village, is that home in the village of any use to them when they are in the city? If it was some use to them in their livelihoods and life and all, they wouldn't have moved out of the village, right? Just because the home can't hold them. And by the way, for every poor person in the villages also, many of them don't even have the homes, by the way, right? There are people still in uh, Bihar and all, Musahars, who have got no homes till date. Right? So there are many homeless even in the villages. So anyhow, let us take it, they have got homes and all. But if the home could hold them as such, they wouldn't have come to the you know, streets of Delhi. So, so our thing was very clear. See, if they are homeless in Delhi, they are homeless in Delhi. Period. They are homeless residents. Homeless citizens belong to the country. Then this th thing came up. Oh, there could be some people from Pakistan and Bangladesh and all. So we said, listen. Our various Supreme Court orders and all have said, UN Charters Convention said that if you are in a resident of a particular place, those laws will apply to you. So we are not bothered. We are working with the homeless people, whether they are Pakistan or Bangladesh. That's the concern of the government. For us, they are homeless and they require the, all the facilities and privileges, which any person deserves as such. You know? So I think, so we were very clear. And, and then of course, we mentioned that, like, you know, it's like sleeping on the footpaths, in the parks, handcarts, rickshaws, you know, on this road medians. You know, on the flyovers, you know, on the flyover uh, boundaries, you know, on the flyover, you know, that wall bridges, they are sleeping on that, they might just fall down and they, it happens, you know. Uh, so, I, I think, you know, so, the, so in a way, uh, we spoke about that and then uh, just to ask you one other question, like, you know, normally when it rains, of course, in Mumbai, it rains heavily. Uh, like in Delhi, we have seen that. Uh, when it rains, have you ever uh, realized uh, how do the homeless sleep? How would they sleep? If somebody from has seen, you know, during monsoon time, Mumbai and all you must have seen, you know, uh, if if you don't have a roof over your head, how would you sleep? And again, this is, uh, you know, in, in one publication, I put the picture also of us. How would they sleep? This person that we saw, he was standing Next to the flyover, suppose this flyover wall is there, this flyover wall, okay. He's standing like this with all the sack and all on him, uh, some bit on his head also. But the rain has been so heavy that he's fully drenched. And he's sleeping in a standing pose. Can you believe it? You're sleeping, standing, you know, unthinkable, unheard, you know. Until you see them in these seasons, you know, you don't realize that homelessness is a problem throughout the year. It is not a problem only for summer, only for winters. Like in Delhi, they've got extreme of all kinds. Summer is atrocious, monsoon, wicked, and winters, the care, nothing to talk about. It's just, it's, it's, and, and, and which months do you think homeless people die in large numbers? 
no summer we believe, we think that this winter months the data for last so many years have told us that major deaths happen in the months of may to june you know winter because winter is extreme so we also feel cold deaths are happening deaths are happening throughout the year okay but it peaks between may and june you know so i think see what happens is now, these are areas on which not much research has been done ah huh? so it's very important that like you know whatever we are doing we research on these areas also and and research on maybe one specific segment of the homeless whether it's children or it's disabled whether it's mentally ill or whatever um you know but it's important that you know we do this we mentioned that you know it's in the cities they subsidize the living of the elite okay and uh, you know so but unfortunately they are the ones who are dubbed as illegal when you talk of migrants the word is illegal migrants right immediately comes the illegal when you talk to the uh, chief ministers and ministers like we had the early chief minister in delhi she was there you know uh, we were called for a meeting and then actually we had gone to meet her we had a uh, plan to meet delhi caring city so we had a proposal and you know she had uh, her social health minister uh, her um, you know uh, who labor minister and all and she was there so she, when she saw us there she said oh yeah good you came and you know uh, with proposal delhi caring city very nice uh, good you're here uh we wanted to solve a problem when she asked us to solve a problem we said what's the problem man you know what you know, there are lots of people coming to delhi we need to you know curb migration so our answer was madam for that you are responsible now to a chief minister we say that you are responsible how does she think it what the what are you how can we say that how can you talk like that so ma'am but tell me one thing aren't you the people who talk about cities as engines of economic growth cities as engines of rural development if cities are engines of economic growth and rural development then the rural has to be in urban period because where is the work it's an urban right you are developing cities as engines of rural development imagine what are, you know what are stuff they talking about so first is you make the rural habitation you cripple it with all the big big statues that go on in this country with all the dams and everything that goes on you make the livelihoods you know like factor in the uh, mind that the farmers marching today to delhi from all over the country because suicides are all happening so i think everything has made the existence you know vulnerable whether it's tribals it's dalits it's muslims or whoever okay on top of it you'll have riots happening on top of it you have lynchings happening on top of it you're dividing society in hindus muslims and all that you know so ultimately where would they live people want to live peacefully eke out a living and bring up the family period you know i think that much i think uh, love we have for each one of us and for families you know but for them when you dub their existence as illegal so our police and all are the most brutal force in any city because you're illegal you're person non grata you can be hauled up under the bombay prisoner begging act under the vagrancy act and so many acts so if you don't have an i card means you had it how many days you be locked up you don't know in the beggars jails and all the fact that you were caught in the bppa bomb prisoner begging act 1959 you could be hauled up in the jail from from for a period of 1 year to 10 years to life if they think that you will not survive without begging you be in the beggars jail others jails criminal jails and all which are there like you know the tihar jail bigger jails you'll know when to you'll come out but this jail you're not told when you'll come out so it's like thankfully due to the work that's gone on through koshish and other groups and all you know that uh, we have done in fact that uh, the delhi high court recently said you know that nobody will be jailed under this law as such so in a way uh, we are moving closer to decriminalizing begging as such especially in delhi and the effort through koshish starting and the friends are like to decriminalize begging in an, uh, you know through an act also so this is i, I would say like you know uh, a march that we are having uh, yes i think i've i've mentioned like you know why we call them homeless residents and city makers and all you know and uh, i i've explained this i think you know and the presentation will be with be, be here you can all read it at leisure as such um yes i think you know it's like it subsumes the worth of the makers and then we talk about city right to city and all so i think um, it's a positive connotation to the existence and the to the city that they bring into existence as such so we talk about that and um, 
Yes, you know, so I think uh, for us, we are we are very mindful, you know, uh, about the various UN conventions and Supreme Court orders and everything. So we use all that in our discourses as well. With with bureaucrats and all, we say that actually you are doing a, you are actually you know doing um, an infringement, uh, you know, a contempt of Constitution of India by not you know by going uh, by creating an argument against Article 19. How can you stop people from migrating this country? Article 19 says very clearly that anybody can move anywhere. The UN charters, conventions, declarations, UDHR of 1948 talks about that, you know. Any person in the world has got a you know, right to life. Human rights is bestowed by UDHR. And in fact, uh, I must share this. Milan Kothari is, uh, you know, who is the UN Special Rapporteur, is I think giving a lecture on 3rd of um, uh, December in Delhi. And he's uh, bringing, uh, talking about uh, what was the Indian contribution to UDHR? We had a delegation sent by India way back, you know, during the deliberations in 45 and all, uh, in which Hansa Mehta and all were there. And they, they were the ones who brought in very important segments in UDHR as such, you know. And so I think maybe, I think that's, uh, he's written a paper, we'll share the paper with you all later. Uh, yes, one thing which this work has taught us, you know, like uh, we were told earlier that there are two Indias, India and Bharat, right? We had B.G. Vargis tell us that and as students we say, ah, ek shair ka desh hai aur ek gaon ka desh hai. But working with the homeless, see again, working with the homeless, we realize that the two Indias are actually India and India in all capital letters and non-India. Let's not fool us, fool around saying that, okay, that, you know, looking here, if you are looking here, everything is fine in this country. India is shining. There is no whining happening, you know, no complaints happening. This is where Constitution of India, Supreme Court, UN declarations, everything functions here very well. Okay? Human rights protect everything. It's actually non-India where poverty is there, where the Dalits, tribals, Muslim women, homeless, they are there. Where nothing happens, where despite the fact that there are various orders that comes to High Court and Supreme Court, it will not be implemented. There will be orders in favor of the poor, but it will never get implemented as such, you know. So, there census happens, which is a fraud, okay. So, um, you know, so like I mentioned that court orders are flouted, not followed in all India. And um, in fact, um, yes, that's important, like, you know, um, uh, in 2003 4 uh, when the master plan for Delhi was being made, so we, uh, about 7,000 homeless people, we gave a memorandum to DDA, Delhi, De Delhi Development Authority, which was framing the you know, master plan to uh, MPD 2021. Okay, now we are having the next one, uh, you know, MPD 2041, you know. So we are also in part of, you know, giving a suggestion for that as well. So the memorandum that we gave to DDA mentioned clearly that we wanted shelters for the homeless people at bus stations, at railway stations, at parking lots, all these places, you know. So that's where, um, you know, uh, master plan came up with the provision of, uh, there's a provision 4.3, which talks about night shelters. And there it says that going by the census population of over 25,000, we uh, would allocate 25 sites for shelters for the homeless. Now imagine the data, that's very important. But thankfully, at least it came as a provision because that is a statutory document. Any master plan is a legal document, it has to be followed. And then there was a provision that we'll have one shelter for 100,000 population. Now that criteria is what, when we had this case going on, I think I'll mention that in um, Supreme Court, which, you know, uh, came in, uh, you know, uh, due to the right to food matter, you know, we told the Supreme Court with our, um, in fact, you know, uh, filing of petitions and all that, um, uh, you know, in fact, the MPD says that there should be one shelter for 100,000 population. So, the Supreme Court said, oh, wow, okay. So, we are going to use this criteria for the entire country. So, they said, so, on a similar line, we should have one shelter for 100,000 population countrywide. Now, that MPD document for which we made a suggestion way back in 2003, 2004, would become a national norm. We had no clue. But we did that. And so, today, that's the norm that we are following. So, when... That was a norm, Acha, I must tell you that, you know, I think, uh, I'll come to that, you know, it's, it's mentioned here, but let me say that. Like, um, by about 2000, um, you know, uh, nine, in fact, we actually, by 2008, we had done another study that was done in IGSSS. 
and um, you know, uh, uh, we came up with a network called Shari Adhikar Manch Begrohon Ke Saath, that's Urban Rights Forum with the Homeless, about 20 organizations part of it. And uh, around 2009, uh, November, uh, we uh, met the Revenue Secretary, who is also the Emergency Secretary in Delhi, one Mr. D.M. Spolia, you know, asking for about 71 shelters, tens in fact, because winters in Delhi are extreme, you know, winters already started in Delhi now. And uh, so, uh, he asked his bureaucrats, you know, his officials, last day there were how many shelters? They said, sir, there were about uh, 16 shelters. So, 16, now one six. He said, okay, 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 fine, you are asking 71. So, we will have 17 shelters. Okay, 17 shelters. Huh? He, he made it 17 with a comment. And the comment was, I will say it in Hindi and then in English, that Delhi mein thand padhti ka hai, thand hoti anand lene ke liye. This is a bureaucrat. Who is the gumption to say that, where do you have winters in Delhi? Winters are meant to be enjoyed. You know? So that's the reason why there was, there were about, you know, uh, 17 shelters that came up, of which one shelter by about 22nd uh, December 2009 got demolished. It was put up by Delhi government. It was demolished by Municipal Corporation Delhi, which was under BJP. So Delhi government was Congress. And BJP, like then, like now, uh, was running MCD. So MCD demolished the shelter, saying that this Commonwealth Games is going to happen in 2010. And um, so, you know, we need to have, we need to beautify Delhi and all. And since the shelter was near a roundabout and all, so they demolished the shelter. So for about two days, we did our, like, because, again, yeah, I must share this, like, you know, right from day one, we had media with us. You know, like, we uh, had friends in the media. Because like, right from the very first study, Delhi Tilt Cities, you know, we had learned to do advocacy. So we had cultivated media friends, you know, from 2003 onwards. Then there were beat journalists, you know, who would do health or who would do that, you know, environment or whatever. So by about 10 years and all, they also became senior and all. So I think they all came, so they were part of our work as such. So uh, in, when it was demolished on 22nd, um, you know, uh, December, uh, we got uh, Ambika Pandits from Times India and other places, you know, to cover it. And on 25th, Jan, uh, 25th December, Christmas Day, she did a cover story out in the cold on Christmas Eve and a larger story on page 7. And uh, after that, there were two deaths that happened because the shelter was demolished. Then we called for a press conference because we were also fed up. It was going to be 10 years for us in a work, you know. That was the first time that we also, in a, in a way, I think, you know, 10 years, long years and the shelter is getting demolished. I think, you know, how long you can go on. So we called for a press conference on 4th January 2010, I think in the later presentation mentioned there. Uh, then on 5th of January, uh, we, had a, we had actually a press release uh, which was um, uh, heavily quoted by, uh, fully actually, I would say fully quoted by Hindu, the Hindu as such, and Times of India. It was a Hindu report because in that press uh, release and press uh, conference, we mentioned very clearly that we are planning to approach the United Nations because our government is doing nothing for the homeless. And we're also planning to uh, file a PIL in Delhi High Court to take up the homeless issues. And so that was that. It was actually, in fact, we got on later from uh, this judge. You know, Justice A.P. Shah was the then Chief Justice of Delhi High Court, who also gave the Article 377 judgment in 2010, you know. Uh, so it was Justice A.P. Shah who took up this matter suo moto in High Court. This court on his own motion. Okay. And so fourth, January, the press conference, 5th, the, the media flashed the news, 6th, the court summoned the government on what grounds he demolished the shelter, give us the order of the official who called for demolition of the shelters and within 24 hours, pitched the shelters there where the shelter was demolished. So from 2010 until 2015, uh, we had about 100 hearings in the matter, you know, and uh, so, you know, about 90 orders came out. And so, when we started the work in Delhi, there were about 19 shelters, 21 planned, 19 shelters were there. By 2001, there were 10 remained because there were many shelters got demolished due to metro and all that. And this year, Jan Feb, we had 272 shelters, highest anywhere in any city in the world. 272 shelters in Delhi, which were permanent buildings and Poda cables and all that, you know. So, this came up, came out because of the High Court coming in to support us in 2010, 2015, and then the Supreme Court PIL that we had filed in 2003 got activated in 2013. So that also, now the case is going on, so because of which shelters have come up all across the country. 
in fact mumbai is a defaulter in fact you know mumbai uh, we have got again a pil through bridgesh you know uh, pehchan uh, he works with the homeless there uh, in the in the high court there you know so uh, so i think the work is happening at that end as such you know so in a way if you see uh, yes i think the, the the thing which i was mention was like this master plan clause we spoke about one shelter for 100000 population when you know supreme court was asking for more shelters high court was saying that follow the same norm you know we got to know from one of our media friends now again say it's very important to have media friends you know very very important we got a call ki indu bhai do you and this is a hindi journalist ki uh, i'll say in english because you know, i think others will not follow ki do you know that uh, uh, the master plan is being amended i said i have heard that but he said but i said what 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 is the issue he said they are amending the clause of one shelter for 100000 population to one shelter for every 500000 population which means it will reduce by five times so when we got to know of that so it was happening actually they were, they were planning to do that once then they come out with the gazette notification so before they came out with that we since the case was going on high court we said that they are doing a contempt of supreme court and high court that they are going against the very criteria of the mpd master plan of delhi for delhi and because we took up in the high court and all the entire thing got stalled so that's why i say you know like we are in non india because if something comes out also because the efforts that we put in first of all it never it will never come out due to their efforts they are being paid whatever they are paid i'm not bothered about that but at least let them do the work if they were doing the work we were not required at all okay they are living in india we are seeing the reality of non india so it's it's i think if we are clear of of this particular thing then we know as to what are we talking about you know so if the problem persists the problem persists because we are it's clear that we are not india we are non india you know and so how is it that we make that into india is a struggle that we all need to take forward so i think that should be clear uh, you know and of course i think uh, these are there like you know the biggest lies you know that we are a democratic country and you know poverty is reduced and of course they had three p's now there are in fact we have got six p's you know i think so it's, so we have got dedicated bureaucracy a vision government scheme benefit which work for the benefit of the poor judiciary is interfering in governance you know they also say that like you know if judiciary was not there i can tell you judiciary actually is a default mechanism if things don't function we go there and you know like it's de jure but it's default like things are not functioning so you go there and then they intervene right and uh, so ultimately this one arm we will be able to use it but it's a very expensive arm because in the high court uh, thankfully we had um, jain bhushan who's younger brother prashant bhushan holding charges a single penny and uh, in supreme court we have got prashant bhushan again who doesn't charge a single penny he does it pro bono both you know brothers and you know so in a way now imagine the cost that would have uh, we, would, we 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 had to pay if suppose we were paying an advocate it is and for 100 appearances and by and mind you jain bhushan is a corporate lawyer not less than 3 to 5 lakhs per hearing it takes for us he was free of cost now input that 3 or 5 lakhs into 100 here appearances do you have the money for that so somewhere you know even see the thing is if you are fighting for a cause we know for sure resources if it's not there uh, don't worry it'll come through which over way and I'm, again i must tell you that even in action aid like you know uh, we got the support from action aid to uh, do this work but we were able to get support from other organizations so we were able to save much of the action cost also because when we are doing networking is also program of other organizations so they are also putting their money so we are saving our money that could be used something else so just because the money is available you splurge the money and uh, you just use the money is also not a good strategy you know because when you do networking you save on cost you save and then you also expand your horizon of work also you know okay um of course you know we are talking about yes um you know uh, i think we talk about various things you know atithi devo bhava you know right uh, treat the guests as gods huh? atithi devo bhava that's a thing we talk about the migrants are atithi or not so who are atithi who come with you know uh, lots of money like ambani and what's happening in france and all that okay so they are atithi these are not atithi at all 
Okay? And by the way, they are the real Atithi. Means Atithi means who come without an appointed date. Baki the people, all the rich and all, they come with appointed date. They are not, they are Tithis. They are dates. But these are Atithi, without date who are coming, you know. Okay? So that, and then we also have, you know, this thing about Vasudeva Kutumbakam. All the world is a divine family. Where does it come to when it comes to the homeless people? They are not divine at all. Huh? They are Choro, Chakkas and Kanglas. Okay? All your spirituality goes for a six. All your uh, Rama, Mandir and everything goes for a six for the homeless people. Huh? All your, uh, you know, everything else. In, the, in fact, all your constitution of India and all is wrapped up when it comes to them. Uh, yes, this was a statement made by a student. And this is, homeless should be killed. You know? And... Um, and this youth who made this statement, I checked with uh, one of his friends who came for the night vigil that night. I said, what is he doing? She said, sir, actually he is um, appearing for IAS. So the thing was, in a two hours, two hours lecture at, uh, I can, I've not mentioned here, but I, I should mention the institution. I was at Delhi School of Social Work. I was invited to speak there to the students. And he was an MA final student of social work. He makes a statement, sir, I volunteered with homeless at Yamuna Pushta and all that. And sir, my thing is very clear. They into drugs and all that. They should be killed. And to which my thing was that, you know, first of all, I'm ashamed that this is coming from a student of uh, social work. I don't know what a faculty has done here with all of you. You know, and uh, uh, I take a strong opposition to your statement. I think if a government did something, you know, they wouldn't have even done all this, drugs and all. And do you know that there's a proper mafia that supplies drugs and all, in which police is involved as such, you know? I think, so it's like, you know, so what's, so what's happening is, in the larger society, these are the impressions people have. Huh? Without engagement with them, or even that the engagement, they'll have their own thoughts as such, you know? Uh, which are dominant, in fact, which only shows that they have not, you know, worked with the homeless people, they've not understood them at all. Yes, and I think one thing is important, like, you know, which is that um, until we do a grassroots action, no advocacy is possible. Media came in to support us because they saw that we were struggling it out, you know. They reported honestly about the work because we were not in for publicity. We wanted the publicity of the cause and of the issue. Yes, due to the cause and the issue, we also got publicity. Our names would come in with interviews and all, but then that was secondary. What is important was that the work needs to be talked about and that's when I think if you see the action happening and then uh, the media talking about it and with the media the judiciary comes in. So if you see there's a proper role. First is we do a proper research. So the work started with the research we did, right? In 2000 there was no research so we did a research. And uh, in fact it, it comes in like when a point when there was not a single publication, today we have about over 30 odd publications on homelessness across the country, you know, um, and, and uh, lots of uh, print material as such. Of course, you know, like working through a network is important. In uh, 2018, we had uh, Jan 272 shelters. Uh, about DM Spoli, I already mentioned, the Delhi with Han And In fact, I must tell you here, um, you know, due to the High Court case which went on, uh, you know, when we put pressure that, you know, there has to be a meeting on shelters and also Delhi High Court asked um, Delhi government to call a meeting of all of us, all the organizations, uh, with Chief Secretary not being there. And in that meeting, you know, so the meeting was happening. This man was also there, Dean Sapoli was there. It was in the month of February 2010. And, uh, you know, I'm sharing this because I think it's important for us to also at times, you know, uh, take up these issues with these guys. So when the meeting ended, you know, um, uh, you know, so the idea was one is to sh tell everybody as to what this man was saying. But I, th I thought that maybe I think it doesn't, it's not appropriate as such. When, when the meeting ended, this guy, Sapoli, was walking and Chief Secretary was standing at the you know, door to which I told Mr. Sapolia that Mr. Sapolia, uh, I'm angry with you. So he says, uh, oh, you may be angry, fine. I said, no, no, but you need to know the reason for my anger. He said, yeah, tell me, tell me. I said, remember when it come to meet you on uh, uh, November, in November 2009, uh, you made the statement that Delhi mein ka hai, I said, my freedom of expression. 
you know you know you can imagine his arrogance huh? i said then you should be behind bars for the death that took place because of 17 shelters that he put up and one shelter which got demolished he said mind your language i said freedom of expression <laughs> The chief secretary was listening to this conversation and such. Now, these guys are so arrogant and so indifferent that somehow we need to also catch them. You know, indecency of, you know, those bureaucratic norms of those high flying meetings where you get samosas and burfis to eat and all that. We also just, you know, get into the meeting process and very common mechanisms we come out, you know. It's important to catch these people, you know, to expose these guys, you know. So, like, and I must tell you here, in fact, this was the guy uh, who became um, chief secretary when Arvind Kejriwal became the chief minister in 2014. And uh, since, by the way, Arvind also happens to be a dear friend. And uh, because we work together, he, Parivartan, be with the homeless. So I think at that point, we just sent an SMS to Arvind. That Arvind, this guy who is the chief secretary, is the guy who said, Dilim Thand Parti Ka Hai and all that. And if you are having me as chief secretary, he will destroy all your work. He was removed. You know, so it's like he was removed. Second time when Arvind came back in 2015, you know, he was going to retire in 20 in February, you know. So we said, Ab isko ya. let him retire two seconds, it doesn't matter. Because for us, it was important lesson for this guy also that, you know, like he should recognize, you know, what he did in fact. So anyhow, um, so he's this guy, you know, it's, it's important. Um, yeah, I, I mentioned about, you know, the deaths and all that. Yes, I think this is important. You know, now if you see in terms of uh, one shelter for 100,000 population, we talk about now um, uh, around 2010, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, we were also part of the, in fact, Harsh Mandar was a National Advisory Council member. So there was this, um, you know, urban poverty group created under NAC. We were members of that. So we worked towards fine tuning the National Urban Library Mission. Okay. In which there is a clause of 50 square feet per person for the homeless people as such, okay, under NULM, which has become you know, the common uh, mission as such. Um, now that norm of DDA, one shelter for 100,000 population, in that there is a, a clause, I think 1315, 13.15, which says that each of the shelters should be of 1000 square meters, which is about 10,000 square feet, okay. So in this case when it's, when it's going on the high court, they would say that we have got 150 shelters and all that. So we said listen, you give us the square footage of shelters, don't give us numbers. You tell us what is the square foot you have in terms of shelters for Delhi's homeless. And when they came out with the figures, they came out with the figures of some 244,507 square feet. And as per the MPD norm of one shelter for 100,000 population, each shelter being 1,000 square uh, meters, it comes to that 1,900,000 square feet of shelter should be there in Delhi. Okay, which means that still there is a deficit of 85% shelter space in Delhi for the homeless. So, which in a way builds a ground for us to lobby for more shelters, bigger shelters, and all. Which the current government, thankfully, Arvind has brought bigger shelters and better shelters in Delhi as such. But still, this shelter deficit, I think, is very important to also to know what arguments to pitch and keep on you know increasing the pitch keep on coming with final arguments so that I think we are able to address all the issues holistically you know I think so while we start with shelters we move into shelters because if shelters are not there shelter space is of no value so when we get shelters we then start talking shelter space and um, you know uh, I'll, I'll, so, so that was uh, I think this is important um, yes I think uh, this was if you see this is one page that we had created on this, you know, shelter space and all. We sent it to media and this is, this becomes an article in Hindu as such, you know. So I think it's also like, you know, how is it that if you are able to use the media properly, if you do a proper, the one pager becomes a one, if you see the column, they're citing us with figures and everything. So beautifully, you know, what is the shelter condition in Delhi, what is the space constraints and all, it's all mentioned there. You know, what we had this in one page here, we got, get a full article in Hindu on this, okay. Um, <clears throat> so, I think, you know, it's about uh, spaces and all that we're talking about. Um, yes, I think, 
uh, the Delhi court, uh, High Court matter ended on 29th of um, April 2015. And, uh, you know, uh, in terms of the work that we have done, we have had many innovations. You know, I've mentioned about, you know, the headcount of the homeless. So I mentioned about the studies we did in Delhi, in Chennai, in Pune, Hyderabad, Kolkata, Patna, Guwahati, Delhi again, Bangalore in 2010. So I think all that, you know, if you see the networking way back, street medicine, night out, night vigils, using PRA in urban settings, you know. Like, um, PRA is, is spoken of as participant in rural appraisal. So I must tell you, you know, that uh, initially, you know, there was this thing about like, you know, when we wanted to do PRA training, when we started the work, so there were friends questioning us, is it rural thing, why do you want to do rural, you know? It's, so we said, listen, our hunch is that we can apply this technique in urban settings also. And we went for it. In fact, my entire team of Ashradika Rabhyan, uh, you know, about uh, in batches we went to PRA training. Even the committee workers, we all got trained in PRA. And that's the thing because of which we were able to take, our takeoff was very quick. We never, we never spent 10 years to come to these things, you know. We got shelters cracking in the very second year as such of the work. Otherwise, it would take, it would take 10 years to come where, you know, I think uh, what we have achieved, you know, as such. Uh, so I think all that is mentioned here. We have done, I think there are a whole lot of things, you know, National City Megas Caravan that happened, which moved, traveled the entire country as such. You know, there were exercises of empathy listening with the police, which I read. So about orientations and 100% positivity and all that we talk about. So we did, see, because we, you know, like, uh, there was nothing to fall back upon. So we surely, you know, uh, followed what Tago talks about, what Ramina Tago talks about, that the paths are made by walking. So we, and we didn't wait for a path to follow, but we said, let's start doing the work and maybe paths will get made. So this is how a path got made due to the work that we did. Again, this work was not done, done alone ever. It was done with a collaboration of lots of people. You know, so I think, uh, again, for a, for a work like this, I think even if there is a, somebody tells you there's a value in doing it alone, never do it alone because there are lots of forces against you. And together, we can handle these forces. Alone, it gets difficult. So I think maybe strategically, we were right there. We used to do slideshows and all in schools. And after slideshows, we used to make the children write the comments as to what they felt about the slideshow, you know, about homeless. Because earlier, we used to, you know, we didn't have this, all these things. So we used to have an OHP, you know, overhead projector. So with Mubanakar, we used to carry the entire overhead projectors in the uh, whatever, auto, taxi, whatever, and go to the school with that, you know. So with the presentation, obviously, make it. So, so of that, you know, two pages, I still remember, of the two pages that where this guy, you know, Manik Khanna wrote, we found the statement somewhere there, you know, after I written that. So imagine, just for about one hour session, this child could write about the homeless, that they have everything given by God, but nothing given by man. And we have DM Spoli, an ICE officer, who feels the Delhi is winter, they're meant to enjoy it. And in fact, so uh, fortunately, in the social media days, I tried to track him where he is now today, you know. So I tracked him. Uh, today he's in, of course, uh, New Jersey. He's an IT uh, guy, and recently he was there. Uh, in Delhi, so I, in fact, I, I, I come out of the book, so I gifted him the book also. And I said, your coat is there. And he was, you know, and we have been using this coat in much of a work you've done also. Like a, a ninth class child with one hour presentation can talk about this. And all our planners and policy makers don't understand the simple thing, you know. So how much time do we require, or what would we require for them to understand this? Uh, do they do they do we take them to class 9th again that we have money khanna like them that we make them into that that they understand this uh, last year dd demolished one of the shelters at uh, you know uh, nizamuddin okay uh, uh, reason was that uh, i think one of the golf playing advocates felt that this was an encroachment of uh, urban spaces and he wanted a beautiful city so he filed a, you know, a public litigation that this area needs to be cleaned. And the High Court had given orders that please check uh, the encroachments. And then they mentioned that there is a shelter also. So the High Court had said that please check if there are proper orders for the shelter and then take any action. And kindly inform the court as to what you find. Did he went ahead without informing the court and demolish the shelter. So we have taken it with the High Court. There is a PIL in the High Court now that they misuse the high court order 
and the high court never said he demolished it. High court said, check it out and let us know. If they let us uh, let the court know, it will never be demolished, you know. Um, of course, this is the hope that we talk about. This, you know, remember the first painting you saw there? The pieces. Now here there is another painting which is talking about, you know, a, uh, on the tree there is this rope, you know, hope, and there is this child who was having this solution. You know, the eyes sparkling, you know. So it's like, that's what this painter started to show that there's a hope there. Um, yes, we believe in justice, rebirth, you know. Uh, Jaya, I, I, I was talking about this child having solution in this painting. And his light, eyes flashes up, you know, when he sees us, you know. It's like there's a hope there in the child also, in the work that's happening as such. So uh, that's it. And um, then we talk about justice, liberty, equality, sorority, fraternity for all. And we, uh, the work that we have done is very clearly based on the Constitution of India. You know, for us, nothing is more sacred than the Constitution as such. And the various UN charters and conventions and all, we are very clear. This uh, picture is from Mumbai. When Salman Khan was uh, being convicted and the matter had gone to the High Court, a protest was happening, you know, when I think Abhijit had said, you know, that these are brave dogs and if you sleep like dogs, you'll be killed like dogs, you know. Kutte, kutte ke mot marenge, you know. So this is what we said, like, you know, city makers and nation makers, you know. You know that, so I think, the, not dogs, Abhijit, you know, if you see this posters there. So this was a po uh, protest happening outside the High Court in Mumbai. So I think, in a way, I think, you know, we were able to, you know, mobilize, I think, so a group which is there in Mumbai uh, through Brijesh uh, is active as such. So we talk about, you know, um, a Zindabad Shahar. Zindabad is which is live and kicking, which is Abad. It is not a Murdabad Shahar. Like all the smart cities in Amrut and Jainunaram that I talk about, this is actually Murdabad stuff, you know. That you're killing cities, you're killing people, you're making that glorious India they talk about into a non-India, is that Zindabad. So I think that's why we talk about our Zindabad Shahar. And this is a campaign that we also launched with various groups in Delhi as such. And the idea is to you know, take it forward, as, you know, so we're talking of all that is there, Shaher, Gaon, Vishwan, you know, of course, Bidi Zindabad is there for sure, This, which is of course a campaign of action also. Uh, and then of course, I think, City Makers Mission International Zindabad, all that is there. So that is it.